As you can see, or as you know, the Socademic site is slowly changing into a vlog site, vlog site, vlog site. Um, so there's hardly any blogs now. The new site's going to be done, so there's going to be various different avenues. We're going to stream our football talk education whatever you want to call it but at the moment it's just vlogs so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the time to go over some of the old um, blogs that we thought were really good so I'm going to start off with unfulfilled potential we're going to go back over one of the ones we did before and which caused a bit of a stir so to the new followers who haven't seen it we can get your opinions for the old one some of you it might get your blood boiling again because you know everyone had different opinions but I'm going to pick someone who at under 21 level was probably banned as, I mean, one of the biggest star, well, sorry, potentially he will be the biggest star in the world, along with his teammate, who was Cristiano Ronaldo. So I'm going back to Ricardo Quaresma, and he was, obviously, I know he's played in Sporting, he's played at Porto, and he's at Besiktas now, but um, one of the things that we discussed was, obviously, when he was absolutely killing it with Ronaldo, he was at Barca, some people actually didn't know that. And um, the question is, why didn't he survive or, you know, why wasn't he successful there? And obviously with the media, I think it influences people. They say, oh, he flopped or he's just not good enough. He's just this, he's not that. Um, and then, obviously, I know, I think he went back to Port. Oh, I'm not going to do it all of the clubs, but then he ended up at Chelsea. Um, didn't really get a fair chance, I don't think. But maybe he wasn't doing it in training or when he came on as a sub, he's probably just not saying much. And then we've got him at Inter. I didn't um I didn't really follow him at Inter, so I can't really say what happened there. But I feel that this guy, he's got an unbelievable right foot. He's got a two in one. You know when you go shopping and you get two in one because he, his left foot is only for standing on and he, he's so one footed, but he's so good with his right foot because he can whip it with good quality and outside the boot. He's absolutely maximised that outside swing because he does not want to use his left. Um, and he's got skills as well. And I think sometimes we label people flop very easily because if Ronaldo got sold, say after a season or two, because he was very entertaining when he first got their skills but weren't really scoring, weren't doing assists, we would all label him a flop when really he didn't. Alex Ferguson saw the potential, gave him a chance, worked on him, said, you know what, don't want you to do that, I want you to do this, blah, 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 blah. And now he's the greatest thing ever. If Charisma was there, my personal view is, I think Ferguson would have done the same thing. I think he would have put him into shape and made him effective. Don't get me wrong, there are players like Jemba Jemba, other greats like Cleverson who don't survive this. So Ferguson's not a magician, he can't do it with everyone. But Nanny, Nanny didn't have the best of times at Man United. Some people might say he's, you know, he's not that great, but regardless, he's a major attacking threat. One of the main ones um, in the Premier League as a winger, goals and assists. So I, I still think that he has unfulfilled potential. Um, what do you think? Do you reckon he was overrated? Do you think he is unfulfilled? Why do you think he, you know, he didn't make it at the top level? Because he's been at the top clubs. They've seen something in him. No one can go Chelsea, Inter Milan, and Barca. Okay, without having something about him. So, you give me your view.